everyone, my name is Anya Patel and today I will be speaking to you about the issue of period poverty and its effects on health and education. But before I begin, I wanted to share a few things about myself. I am a senior at Hillsborough High School in Tampa, Florida. I play club volleyball and I play the flute in my school band. I am the founder of Global Rules Initiative, which is a nonprofit with a mission to provide free menstrual hygiene products and education to youth and students in underserved communities. I started it about two years ago when I learned that girls within my own community were missing out on school and their education because they didn't have access to the basic necessity of period products. I have donated over 300,000 menstrual hygiene products, and I am currently working with my school district to install free menstrual hygiene dispensers in all Title I high school bathrooms. So let's start off with what period poverty is. So a lot of people, including myself up until a couple years ago, are unaware of the issue of period poverty. It is not a very commonly recognized issue, but it has negative effects on health and quality of life of menstruators. So period poverty refers to the inability to afford or have access to period products. It also includes inadequate access to washing facilities and waste management. This means that period poverty is not just lacking menstrual hygiene products themselves, but it is also extended to not having toilets, water, soap, and other resources that are necessary to managing period cycles. 500,000 menstruators across the world experience period poverty, so it is a very big issue. When menstruators don't have access to period products, they're forced to resort to unhygienic alternatives like old t-shirts, rags, and socks. So in addition to harming their physical health, period poverty can also take a massive toll on mental health. 68% of women who experienced period poverty every month showed symptoms of moderate to severe depression. So not having period products creates a lot of stress and anxiety, especially for people like teenagers and young adults, because they're already so stressed with school, homework, friends, and even extracurricular activities. So having to worry about a basic hygiene necessity like period products can really lead to an increase in stress level and result in mental illnesses like depression. 58% of young girls lose confidence at puberty and starting their period marks girls lowest point in confidence during their teenage years. So due to the stigma surrounding menstruation, there is a big lack of period education. Sometimes parents and teachers don't educate girls on what a period is. And when they get their first period, they're unaware of what's happening to their bodies and they have no way of knowing how to manage it, much less having the products like pads and tampons. Period poverty also interferes with girls' basic right to an education. Research study in Delhi, India showed that 245 out of 600 girls, or 40% of them, miss school during their periods. So while you might think just missing a couple days of school might not seem very bad, when you think about girls missing three to five days of school every month continuously, it creates this big snowball effect of continuously getting more and more behind on schoolwork and class time, and it results in a lot of girls ending up dropping out of school. In the US, one in five girls miss school due to lack of access to menstrual hygiene products. And this is a really good statistic that comes to show how period poverty isn't just an issue in third world countries, but it is prevalent in first world developed countries like America. And although period poverty is not addressed as a big issue, it truly is a problem that people face all over the world. So now that we know the serious effects that period poverty can have, we need to focus on a solution. So how can we combat period poverty? The first step is to remove the stigma around menstruation. Not only are people afraid to talk about it, but in many countries, girls are taught to be ashamed of their periods. And as a result, many of them are afraid to reach out for help. 
For example, in Nepal, Chaupadi is a practice of banishing women away from their home to live in huts during their period. So although this is a very extreme form of period taboo, a lot of other cultures restrict women during menstruation. For example, in India, women are not allowed in temples, praying services, and even the kitchen because they're deemed unholy and dirty during their periods. Because of this massive stigma that surrounds the topic of menstruation, period poverty is not a commonly addressed issue. It's important for us to understand that periods in menstruation are a natural bodily process and that we need to have open conversations about the topic because if we aren't willing to talk about it, we can't solve it. The next thing that we can do is donate period products to local shelters and Title I schools. So many shelters receive donations for stuff like food and clothes, which are obviously essential items, but no one really thinks of bringing period products. Finally, you can contact your local representatives. Representatives are very open to receiving feedback from their constituents and they want to help, but many of them are unaware of what period poverty is. So just talking to them about the issue and even asking them to sponsor or support bills to provide free period products. Many countries like New Zealand and Australia and some states in America like Illinois and New York, to name a few, provide free period products. So we are definitely making progress to ensure period equity and solve period poverty, but there is so much work that still needs to be done. Lack of access to period products causes harm to menstruators' physical and mental health, in addition to preventing them from attending school and having them miss out on their education. It is important that each one of us takes the time to accept that period poverty is a real issue and that we need to take action on it now. You can contact my organization, Global Girls Initiative, on our website, globalgi.org, or on our Instagram at global.gi if you want to learn more about period poverty and how you can help solve this issue. Thank you so much for listening. Mm.